Today we'll talk about Black Myth Wukong based on the reviews found on Steam. We'll first talk about the positive reviews. Now before we dive into the reviews, it's important to know that a huge majority of these positive reviews come from Chinese gamers who want to support a Chinese game. So it's safe to assume that having a really good huge number of positive reviews for this game is a form of bias. If we briefly look at the filters right here, see, your language is 10,511. That's 10,000 English reviews out of, let's say, 274,000 reviews out there. So I would say like more than 250,000 would be Chinese reviews. There it is. See? Most of the reviews are Chinese. It's flooded with Chinese reviews. All 250, 60,000, maybe more, maybe less. As the Chinese gaming community often displays this type of patriotism where they support most products that come from China. Of the huge number of reviews that I've read, most of the positive reviews talk about the amazing gameplay and game style of the game. They call it the Chinese God of War, which is a huge compliment. After all, God of War has been a very successful franchise. Some reviews also say that it's similar to Dark Souls, but I, I think it's closer to God of War than Dark Souls, to be honest. It's basically a Chinese God of War and the Jedi Has Fallen series. And like those games, it has some Soulsborne influences, but doesn't lean too heavily into it. If you enjoyed God of War and the Jedi Has Fallen, then you will definitely enjoy this. Personally, find this to be a bit more fun. Amazing game in every aspect. Totally recommend it if you're into something similar to God of War with some Souls-like mechanics. Very fun to play. Linear and semi-open world regions with lots of exploration, secrets, enemies, and some remarkable bosses. Now, this guy did receive it for free, though. The game is also praised for its amazing graphics, all thanks to Unreal Engine 5. Pure eye candy, running on a 4080 Super at 3440 by 1440 I'm getting a steady 60 to 80 frames per second with graphics set to cinematic, the highest it goes with RT set to high. No crashing issues seen yet, detected, and game is running smooth as butter. 60 to 80 F FPS is kind of low though. Depends on your preference, of course. But yes, the production value in this game is off the charts. It looks even more beautiful than it does on the Steam store page. It sounds beautiful too. The gameplay is also fun, fluid, and engaging. There's so much done right about this game that I hate to talk about what's going, what's wrong with it. One important note though, most of these reviews are reviewed using high-end graphic cards. That's right. Most of the people who leave these comments have a very high-end GPU, which are usually in between RTX 460 to the overpowered RTX 4090. Of course, with these graphic cards, you should be expecting pristine performance. So if you don't have a good graphics card, I don't know how the game will be for you. Unless you have a PS5, of course. Another type of positive review comes from players who know the story of Journey to the West. These are most likely the huge Chinese population who bought the game from Steam. Knowing the story definitely makes playing the game more enjoyable. Here's a good summary of the journey to the West. You can pause the video and quickly read it. Are you done reading it? Now let's talk about some of the negative reviews. The negative reviews are divided into two groups, game crashes and the gameplay and features. Now let's go to the game crashes. Most of the game crashes have been attributed to the game's incompatibility with AMD graphic cards. That's right. If you are using AMD graphic cards in your computer, then you'll probably struggle. Despite how powerful your system is, it, it'll just keep crashing. Let's take a look at these two comments right here. Let's read the first one. Not friendly with AMD cards. Update. I just had to put everything on low, lock the FPS at 30, and put TSR to about 40%. Skip cutscenes and make it to the first bonfire. From there, whatever graphical setting works. For reference, I have a 7900 XDX 7800X3D. Now let's take a look at the other comment. 
do not buy right now if you have an AMD card. I have an RX 7900 XT with a Ryzen 7600. That's quite powerful. The game keeps crashing during the opening scene and I can't skip it without the game crashing. I haven't been able to play the game at all. My drivers are fully updated. They need to fix this. Well, just like any other game, you know, um, once it launches, things like these will just pop out. And this seems to be a major issue with the game right now, despite its really positive reviews. Now, does that mean that if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card at your safe? I don't think so. Just like this next one. I have over an hour played in this game and I have not even made it to the main menu once. Crashes my entire PC every time I try to launch the game. My PC is well above the recommended requirements to play. I've tried every remedy that's posted online at this time and nothing has worked. I would love to play the game. This game, it really does look like a lot of fun. But unfortunately, I have to refund before I'm not able to anymore due to my playtime exceeding two hours. Well, that's just the reality. So if you're planning to buy it on PC, please test it out first, right? If you buy it, you got to play it at once so that you can refund the game if it doesn't work. Even Asmongold had a difficult time with the PC issues. 44.50% is what I meant. Uh, it was 40, it was, I meant 44.50. Yeah. Uh, no, it's okay. Sometimes you get it. Yeah, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. It's all right. I'm not worried about it. The launch is broken. Yeah, I know. This is, I think, it, this is the first time it's happened before that there's been a PC game that's released that's had problems. Uh, usually PC releases don't have problems like this. Now, we're talking about Asmund Gold right there. I'm sure he has a good god to your PC, and even he had problems. Among the negatives, of course, there is the gameplay and its features. Despite the praises for its gameplay, there will always be people who won't like it. Brain dead between bosses gameplay, unfair, unfun boss gameplay, level design is generic to the point of feeling like an acid flip. Hmm. Well, in a way they are correct. This game does have a lot of bosses, and these boss fights can be very hard and frustrating. So if you're not the, um, you know, the, the Souls or Elden Ring type of gamer who's used to dying a lot of times, then, you know, you might get frustrated. And it's just not fun. Another missing feature that seems to bother some gamers is the lack of a minimap. Or map for that matter. There's no minimap or any map to guide you where you're going. It's basically a straight progression game with very limited open world features, if, if any. So those who are looking forward to a full open world game, this is not it. And by that alone, it separates itself from Elden Ring or Stellar Blade or even God of War, which has better open world features. Map design, negative 10 out of 10. This is one of the worst map designs I've ever seen in a game without a traditional map for navigation. There should be enough visual cues to guide players along the main path and hint at hidden areas. Unfortunately, this game's map, though aesthetically pleasing, is practically useless. It's difficult to tell where you can and can't go, and everything looks so similar that it's hard to distinguish between explored and unexplored areas. Locating enemies is a challenge due to the cluttered environment. It doesn't feel like I'm playing a game. It feels more like I'm struggling to survive in the wilderness. Now, I personally didn't find the navigation to be that much of a problem. It could be a problem at times, but compared to what he's saying, I'm, I'm not having that level of difficulty. Could be because I'm a more experienced gamer, but those who are relatively newer could definitely struggle with the navigation due to the lack of a minimap or clues to tell them where to go. Now, of course, this is Steam and everyone can just write whatever they want. We're also going to have a lot of the crazier reviews. These are the types of reviews that are tainted with politics and propaganda. To craft a masterpiece, one must avoid the Council of Sweet Baby Inc. Sun Tzu, probably. <laughs> Woke DEI game journalist on life support right now. This game is awesome. We also have the more racist reviews. Finally, a good game with a black protagonist. Oh no. And of course, more politics. If you want to support a super misogynistic games company, then this is the game for you. Hmm. The developers are misogynists. 
I, I bet these people just bought the game to write this review and then immediately refund it. That's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and sum up the reviews. So for the positive, the game has great graphics and great gameplay. For the negatives, of course, the game crashes a lot. Okay, once again, AMD. And of course, the map, minimap, and navigation. Well, that's it for today. I really hope this video helps you decide whether you want to grab the game or not. If you enjoyed this content, please smash that subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next video.